Okay, so as he said, my name is James Hearn, known to most people as Herney. Um, about two years ago, I decided to make a change. Um, I was pretty much drinking myself into a, a mess. Um, it was starting to get to the point that it wasn't fun anymore. I used to drink because it would hide my depression. It would then lead me to um, feel happy for a certain amount of time. Uh, the trouble is, eventually that stopped happening. So I got to a point where it, I decided in my head that I want to change. I need to make big changes. But this time, something was different. I really meant it. And to, to explain that is, I've said it many times and meant it. But this time it was, I really meant it. There's just something that, that twigged in my head. So I started a course um, for nutrition and, and slowly, but surely started to learn um, what you're eating is, you know, you are what you eat, as they say. Um, so I spent uh, probably three months on this course and I didn't drink. And I felt really good. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to continue this. So continuing it, I did, and I'm two years later and I still haven't drunk anything, which uh, for how big of a drink I was, it's quite, that's my biggest achievement. Um, when I was doing this uh, uh, course and stuff, we were recommended to walk. And the more I looked into it, the more I realized how beneficial it was for your mental health. Um, so along the course, as Daniel said, I um, began to... Uh, write a blog about my journey, mainly for my friends to see uh, how I was getting on and stuff like that, but it really took off and uh, and I started doing videos and, and feeding my ego then. <laughs> and it was, um, it has sort of grown into into something I think that's at first was just to my friends, but in the end it started becoming like a diary and being able to um, to write so honestly um, I sometimes forget that I'm actually writing it to put on Facebook for anybody to read, but it really um, it, it really helped me, and it still does. And uh, so I um, I start, set up a, a walking club called Between a Walk and a, a Hard Place, um, which was with my friend June Granville, who who actually came up with the original idea. And it was um, uh, you know, the benefits of just walking, say, 20 minutes a day or half an hour um, or an hour every other day, things like that. And that's when I felt the most clear in my mind because I've had um, a lot to deal with in my head as, you know, it's very easy to say everything's gone wrong for me, but it hasn't gone wrong for everyone else. But in reality, we're all fighting the same battle. We all have... Um, you know, demons from the past. We all, you know, I've lost uh, a few close friends at a young age and that was quite a lot for me to deal with. In fact, this is where I lived. Right above me was my bedroom. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, we had some very good times and we had some very sad times. But I was never taught how to, to deal with, um, you know, mental health because, I mean, it was, very, um, it was very different to what it is now. People are very open about how they feel. It's not you know, considered to be, um, you're not considered to be less of a man for for opening up about um, things that are personal, as I'm here today talking about things that are personal to me. I wouldn't have done this five years or ten years ago. Um, so by walking as we did, I, I've got a pretty cool statistic, and it's from the um, American Journal, and they had 20 subjects that were clinically depressed and on medication. Um, ten of them and ten of them were put, you know, two groups. And the only difference between the groups is this ten um, people went out and walked for, um, and it wasn't even an hour a day, it was about 30 to 40 minutes a day. Three months later, the ten people that didn't walk were still on the medication and very little improvement, if any. And the other group, just by the walking, um, all of them felt a dramatic change in their mental health and 60% of them, six people then, um, were actually diagnosed, well weren't diagnosed then, they were um, off medication completely and, um, and it just proves that something so simple as walking um, can make such a big difference to you and I've, with the group that we set up I've tried to encourage people that just because you haven't got mental health issues isn't a reason to not maintain 
your mental health. I mean, if you're a healthy person, um, a lot of people go to the gym to maintain, you know, their physique or, or you know, their health. So why wait until your mental health deteriorates before maintaining it? So the group is to um, encourage people to just come for that walk, and you'll find that you know you could have loads of decisions in your in your head that you're struggling with, but you go for an hour walk, and you know even if it's just one of the hundred decisions you've got to make, but your mind will clear and you, you'll make a rational decision and one that you're happy with. So it's um, it, it's so helpful to to you know to exercise your mental health, I think, for lack of a better word. And it's, uh, it, it's helped me from being a near alcoholic at 30 years old, uh, you know, a man that was struggling to deal with the emotional side to, to losing a friend or broken relationships. And, you know, I'm trying to, to medication, obviously you need for certain things, but when it comes to, me, you know, mental health, you can do a lot just by being active. And, uh, and that's what the group is about. Um, Donald said before, I've recently started a podcast. Um, it's something that I've, um, from writing the blog and from following other blogs and learning from it, I, um, I really enjoyed the podcast of it. So as I don't drink, I thought, right, I can spend my money on something else. And uh, it, it certainly has emptied the bank, I must admit. But it's, um, it's something that I'm trying to get people like Daniel and Ricky to, to come on. They were my first guests and we talked um, just between friends almost. But there's so much information you can give to other people by just, you know, talking and, and trusting the people that you speak to. Because one thing I learned when I was looking around at blogs and different podcasts and stuff like that is there is probably 80% of what you read on Facebook is, is unfortunately nothing <laughs> of any relevance. It's usually to get likes and shares, and, and that's how they do it, by telling you what you want to hear. And unfortunately, that's educating people in, in, a, in a very bad way. Um, and I, um, yeah, so I, I'm hoping to take this to another level. Um, I'm going to keep, keep pushing. We, we started off slow, but, you know, nothing was, well, Rome wasn't built in a day, and um, I'm really proud for the fact that my journey is is inspiring some people. I get often get messages saying um, how you know how did you do it? What are you doing? And and I've always got to stress that you know I'm not qualified in any way apart from experience. And sometimes that that's something that a lot of people can't buy. And I think I've got something and a, a good opportunity to to really um, to make a bit of a difference. And as I learn, I'm sharing. Not just my positives. I think it's important to to share your, um, your the negative side, the bits that I fail with. Um, strangely, drinking I thought would be the hardest thing for me to give up, but it seemed to be the easiest thing for me to give up, um, and the most beneficial. Um, I am struggling a little bit with, with smoking at the moment, but I'm um, I'm learning about the, the the mind side of it, and that to me, I didn't realise how important in my health or my transformation um, that my mind was. I didn't realize that, you know, I, all right, you can eat healthy, you can exercise, but it got me to a point. But because I hadn't fixed my mental state, I had no um, nowhere to go. I got to a point and I was self-sabotaging because I had like the fear of success, which sounds very strange to, to say, but I was, I, I felt comfortable being able to have a drink of Dutch courage. I felt comfortable being able to eat what I wanted when I wanted. It was only when I stopped that I realized how uncomfortable I actually was. And unfortunately, the only way to really experience that is to actually do it. It's very easy for me to say it to you now. And, and, and when you, you sort of look back on paper, everything looks easy. Um, but in reality, it's not always the case. Um, um, yeah, so I've got um, five stone, I think five, five and a half stone nearly I've lost in two years. Um, and it's, I've, ideally, I've, well, I haven't got a target weight because I want to get to a point where I feel, yes, this is where I want to be. I think it's nice to have a bit of an aim. I'd like to get around 15, 16 stone eventually. And something that I thought I'd never say on a stage or in front of a camera is I currently weigh um, 20 stone, three pounds. And I would have been embarrassed to say that at one point. And, and I think the other lesson I've learned from my journey is, um, and is said a lot in, in the, the health industry, is I love and I accept myself. And until you can truly learn to love yourself, 
um, or to accept itself for, for who you are, that's when you're going to look at yourself and think, oh, actually, I think I could work on this or work on that. You can't be hard on yourself. If you're always looking at the scales and you're, you're like that, oh, I haven't lost any weight again. Next week, you step on the scales again, I'm not going to lose any weight this week. You look down and guess what? You haven't lost any weight again because you're focusing on the negative. If you concentrate on being, um, you know, your nutrition, you know, you're being active and things like that, getting healthy is from your mind first. And if you've got a healthy mind, your, your weight loss or, you know, that will follow eventually. Um, but you shouldn't want to just lose weight. You should want to be healthy. And when you become healthy, the weight will slowly will go. You know, a lot of people will assume because they haven't got weight to, to lose that they're healthy. Well, in fact, that's, you could just as equally be as unhealthy as somebody that's bigger. You could also, um, you know, look at it as, uh, you know, you're, it's very difficult to, to try and explain because I've, I've never been happier. I've got so much that I want to do. I've got so much that I want to give. And I wrote a blog last week, and in it I said, I wrote it as if I'd succeeded in what I'd set out to, to do. But in fact, I was only, uh, only words I used was, um, I feel like I've knocked down the old house and I've laid the foundations for me to build the dream house. And so at the moment, I've only really just begun. And it, it is um, it's two years in, but I don't care how long it takes because it's something you've got to learn slowly. And if you learn it slowly and if you enjoy it, if you don't enjoy it, move on to something else and find something that you do like. And then you'll get an enthusiasm for it and you'll get a love for it. And when you do love something, you would give your all to it. Um, so if there's any information anybody would ever like, always feel free to contact me. Um, and my blog is Herney's blog on Facebook. Uh, my podcast is Half the Man I Used to Be. And, uh, and I look forward to not just showing to everybody what I'm going to do, but also to myself, proving to myself that I can be the man that I always dreamt to be. And that, I feel, I'm on the way to it. So thank you very much for, uh, for listening. It's a bit weird talking to a few people. As, uh, <laughs> in fact, I think it's more nerve-wracking than, uh, than more people. But thank you very much, and uh, yeah, enjoy your day. Thank you.